In kettlebell training, we do a powerful exercise called the jerk. It's an exercise that I will explain later in detail in the video. In a nutshell, you harvest your body's ability to act like a catapult or a large spring, which allows you to move heavy weights and boost your explosiveness and power. This exercise requires your knees to go past your toes. Many of you are familiar with the knees over toes guy, who, as the name implies, advocates for the knees to go past the toes. And I can tell you that this brother has a solid case for his cause. You see, there's a prevailing misconception that if you bend your knees past your toes, your shins moving from vertical to horizontal, that this might lead to injury. Unfortunately, this fear is not based in evidence. Even further, if practitioners adhere to this and restrict movement in the shank, quite the opposite happens injury rates go through the roof. If you need a case study for this, just look at the NBA or the NFL. They experience a high rate of injuries, especially in the lower extremities. Matter of fact, this happens so frequently that the NFL has built their own special clinic to treat this problem. Why is that? You see, the professionals who are in charge of training these elite athletes all agree that the knee is not supposed to go beyond the toes. Now compare this to this stark contrast of elite weightlifters who do not restrict movement of the shank at all. These guys and gals are the strongest in the world and handle up to 300% of their own body weight. And they catch these 300% of their own body weight with the knees going past the toes. This would make an NFL strength coach vomit. Now, in defense of restricted movements of the shank, I have experienced that people suffer from severe pain in the knee once their knees go past the toes. So what's the hype all about? Let's cut through it in this video. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50K giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. Prinsipitrand Gregory von Lebestag here. First, I wanna cover a little bit of theory and I wanna build an interesting case study around the idea of the knees going past the toes. And at the end of the video, I wanna show you a couple of practical examples that you can use in seven exercises to build a stronger hip and a stronger knee. I'm also gonna give you a workout recommendation, so make sure to watch until the end. In the words of Leonardo da Vinci, first we have to learn how to see and understand that everything connects to everything. If we start restricting movements in any part of the kinetic chain of the human body, there will be consequences. According to Andrew Charniga and a host of scientific literature from the former Soviet Union, we have to pay attention to the muscles of the lower extremities or the shank. We need synergistic movements in order for the leg to act without being inhibited to do so. If you don't allow your knees to go past your toes, you essentially uncouple interdependent movement mechanics of the hip, knee, ankle chain. That lacking synergy will lead to a combination of issues. Lack of ankle mobility, lack of compliance of the tendons and the ligaments, and lack of strength. The result of this might be that an ordinary movement might snap your Achilles tendon in half. An often overlooked factor is the necessity for a dynamic synergy between the posterior and the anterior ankle muscles. An optimal dynamic empowers the athlete to generate power thanks to the rapid displacement of the shins. This rapid movement of the shins between horizontal and vertical utilizes the body's largest spring, the Achilles tendon. In plain English, if you inhibit movement that is natural to your body, 
there will be carnage. Now, this is a strong case for the knees going past the toes, right? Yet, why do some people experience pain then? And what's the origin story of this myth anyway? You see, there's a condition called patellofemoral pain syndrome. This is a condition in which the cartilage under the kneecap is damaged due to injury or overuse. This syndrome is the most common cause for knee pain. And it's common in people who participate in sports. You see, when you bend the knee to a high degree, you create a lot of flexion. And this creates pressure on your kneecap. This might cause pain for people who already suffer from this patellofemoral pain syndrome. And since it is so common, a physiotherapist came up with a great solution. And that's the origin story of this myth. He told his patients to restrict movement in the shins, ergo not letting the knees go past the toes. And he was right. I've experienced the same situation with some of our clients. We restricted movement as well because their knees were so painful. But here's the big difference. We did it temporarily and only in order to build strong hips. Later, we gradually introduced these clients back into full flexion and the knees going past the toes. Thanks to the strong hips, the pain was gone. So here's my conclusion. Weak muscles lead to overuse of other muscles. This might lead to conditions such as the patellofemoral pain syndrome. These people need to build strength and tolerance first. Restricting certain movements that hurt, such as knees going past the toes, might make sense in that case. If you don't, however, suffer from this kind of pain or you have successfully built back tolerance and strength, do not restrict movement. We need the synergy of the shank muscles to work as a unit. If we want to stay, train, walk and be injury free. So now with the theory out of the way, here are seven exercises that can help you build a stronger hip and a stronger knee. The exercises that I'm gonna show you are in chronological order. The first ones are the lighter ones to do and the latter ones are more difficult. Exercise number one is the hinge. This exercise works all of your hip muscles, loosens them up, gives them some mobility and strength. This is how it looks like. We push the hips back, the upper body leans forward while the spine stays straight. As soon as I reach this 90 degree angle, I feel this tension right here in my rear leg muscles. I keep my arms straight at my sides and then I come back up, extending the hips. And once I reach the top, I fully extend and squeeze the glutes. <sighs> Exercise number two is the body weight back squat. Now we get a little bit more muscle involved. That's why it is a little bit more difficult than the hinge, but it starts similar. Now we have a shoulder with stance. Both of my feet point to the left and to the right respectively. Now I start with the hinge. And as soon as my hip is unlocking, I start bending the knees. I cross my arms in front of me and I want to reach that 90 degree angle. And here's where I feel a lot of tension. Now from this position, I want to hold it for a couple of seconds. And then I come back up for the squeezing the glutes on top. This exercise is a perfect strengthening exercise if you want to restrict the movement in your shins because you feel that you have pain in the knees. This is how we can build strength in your hips. Exercise number three is a loaded back squat. The exact same exercise like the previous one, but now we want to use some progressive overload in form of a kettlebell. So I grab it like this, turn it around my head, place it between my shoulder blades, and now I engage in the same movement mechanics like before. With the additional resistance, I can build even more muscle and more strength. With the first three exercises, we're able to build strong hips, even though we might have painful knees. But the strength of the hips will radiate down towards your knees. So as soon as you have built tolerance, here we come up with exercise number four, the hinge squat dip. You might remember that we talked about the necessity for synergy in the hip, knee, ankle kinematic chain. This is the perfect exercise. We start with the hinge. Exercise number one. Now we melt it into a flow by engaging into the back squat. Now I dip my knees forward. Now I come back. Up into the hinge. And 
Finish the exercise on top. The next exercise is the kettlebell swing. Now we add a little bit momentum with weights, which is awesome for some practical strength in your hips. This is how we get started. I have a shoulder with stance, the kettlebell's half a meter in front of me. I hinge, I grab the kettlebell by the handle, tilt it towards me so that the base is off the floor. From this position, I swing my arm and by extension the kettlebell between my legs, making full contact with my body. From this position, I hip thrust the weight upwards and as soon as the hip extension is finished, boom, that's when the arm disconnects from my body. Now, as the kettlebell travels upwards, I'm switching hands because we do a so-called hand-to-hand -hand swing. And as I'm switching hands, right approximately at chest level is where the reverse thrust sets in, where gravity does its thing again and the kettlebell drops. I don't interfere with gravity now, I let it do its thing. I wait for my arm to reconnect with my body and as soon as, as soon as I feel that reconnection, I go back into the hinge. This is what it looks like. Exercise number six is the goblet squat, which simulates a front squat. And this exercise requires a displacement of the shins, a full flexion of the knees. And it's a great exercise to find out whether you have been able to build back enough strength and tolerance to have your knees go past your toes. This is what it looks like. You swing the kettlebell up and grab it by the bell itself, shoulder width stance, chest out, hinging a little bit, knees, now track your toes, and as I reach that bottom position, I wanna go as far down as I can. Now, from this position, I come back up, breathing in, straightening the legs on top, coming back down, and back up, and squeeze those glutes at the top. If you're suffering from ankle mobility issues, use a wedge, place your heels on it, swing the kettlebell up, and now engage into the goblet squat, and you'll be able to reach more depth. Even though this exercise is great to take the ankle mobility question out of the equation, don't forget to work on it as well. The last exercise is the most difficult one, the kettlebell jerk. I've mentioned this exercise at the beginning of the video. With this exercise, we're now engaged into this loaded dipping where we load the Achilles tendon like a spring and use it like a catapult. This allows us to build explosive strength and explosive power. And this is what it looks like. I clean the kettlebell up, inserting my full wrist inside the window of the kettlebell, keeping the arm close to my body. This arm body connection is important because I want to transfer the energy coming from the legs into my arms. Now from this position, I'm dipping, pushing the knees forward. And as you can see now, the knees go above my toes, but I wanna make sure that my feet stay planted on the ground. Now this is how I load the spring. Now I engage into the bump where I fully extend the ankle, knee and hip joint. And as soon as the kettlebell goes up, I wanna catch it by falling back into that second dip, flexing the hip as well. Watch. As soon as I reach this position, I make sure that my shoulder is packed. And now I finish in the top fixation. The lift is finished. And I bring the kettlebell back into the rack position. This rapid displacement of the shin where you're loading your body like a catapult is a obvious display of explosive strength and power. And on top of this, a fast relaxation in the second dip after a contraction is a sign of an elite practitioner. Now, if you're looking to combine these exercises that I just showed you into a simple workout, follow a minimalistic approach. Do one minute per exercise. And if you work both sides, split the volume equally between left and right. After you have done all exercises for one minute, take a dedicated minute of rest, and then go a couple of rounds. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share it with the friends, and then go watch this video. We're all about kettlebells, 
And if you're interested in learning the basics with an easy tutorial and an easy workout, you can watch this video right here. It's gonna be worth your time. So check it out right now.